throughout the first four years of the arrival of the Italians, there was a tension between the, between the SYL and the Italian government. Because the SYL, being a majority and most uh, efficient political party in the country, was against the Italian return. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Bernardi Fracta. Um, before we start, I'd like to make a quick announcement. As you all know, or you, know, you may be aware, last week, 10 days ago, the murder of Abu Bakr Muhammad Sheikh Nurain, also known as Abarimo, who was a merchant in the district of Hamarain. He was brutally murdered by a police officer at that time. And we'd just like to wish our thoughts and prayers to the family. May Allah have mercy on the soul of Abarimo and give patience to the family as well. So moving on now. So today we have a special ep episode. As you know, Bernadir history is very vast. It goes way back where we interacted with many people, be it the Persians, the Arabians, the Asians, and most importantly, the Somalis. And today we'd like to touch on some interactions we had with them. As you know, they were part of the history they were neighbours, we traded with them. At some points we also lived with them. And our interactions increased significantly after the arrival of the Italians. With the arrival of the Italians, it paved the way for the colonial entity of Somalia and Mogadishu becoming the capital. We, the Bernardi people, witnessed many changes in the city, the dynamics, the social structure and everything else. And this is what we're going to talk about today, how it affected us and the impact it had. Now, um, we have with us today Mohammed Trunji. Mohammed Trunji, mashallah, he wrote this amazing book called Somalia and the Untold History between 1941 and 1969. So 1941 and 1969 was a period, a period that, shook, um, that shaped Somali history. This is, towards, this is the period when they were going towards independence. So a lot of incidents took place. This was when a lot of political parties were formed and a lot of um, a lot of incidents such as riots, such as um, court cases, um, divisions that took place. And this book here now, The Untold History, where Muhammad he speaks about this in major details. It's a 600 page, more than 600 page book, fully referenced. He speaks about what took place. So, Dr. Muhammad, first of all, welcome to Banadi Fakta. Thank you very much. Um, before we start, I'd just like to know briefly, tell us about yourself. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Issa Trunji. I was born in Beletwen, Central Somalia, in 1943. Uh, I did my elementary education in that city, in Beletwen. Then I moved to Mogadishu for the secondary school. After the secondary school, I started working as a teacher. Uh, in the elementary school level. I was transferred to my nat native Beletwen. I was lucky because uh, I stayed in my uh, mother's house and everybody knew him, uh, knew me. And then uh, after two years, I think, two academic years, I, I won a, a competition at the national at the national assembly of the parliament in Mogadishu, they needed interpreters of Somali and Italian, and vice versa. So I was uh, successful in that uh, competition, and from that time I was living in Mogadishu. While I was in Mogadishu, I took advantage of my presence in Mogadishu to enroll myself in the, in the then Instituto Universitario. The, the, it was, the, there was no university those days, in the 60s. And that was in 1964, uh, when I came to Mogadishu to work for the National Assembly, which is the parliament. In the afternoon, we used to go to classes at the institute, the university. institute was not a university. It, will become a university 
later on in that 1972. Mm. Uh, then the parliament was dissolved because of the well, intervention because of the, the 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 military took over power. In the meanwhile, I took the diploma or the laurea or the how do you call? Uh, I finished the uh, the law course, which was four years, and then I've been appointed as a judge. I was judge when uh, then. The, the government, the system, the state uh, collapsed and then I left Somalia. Mashallah, so it looks like. Yeah. Um, I was looking at your biography, you're also um, Ministry of Justice, wasn't you? Yes, the Ministry of Justice is uh, where uh, the, the judges are selected or appointed, etc. This was. Uh, and then you also worked abroad, your fingers in Jamaica. You uh -huh, yes, uh, later on, yes, when I left Somalia. I got uh, employment uh, at the High Commissioner for Refugees, which is the, the, the agency of the United Nations responsible for the refugees. And I served this uh, agency in many countries like uh, Ethiopia, Zambia, Iran, Iraq, uh, and or the Sudan that was and at the when I reached the retirement age I came to London to establish myself in 2006 which is where London is where I, I've been living over the well, last 15, 15 years. years yes so it looks like you had a long yes. career yeah and a prosperous one as well mm. so now moving forward tell us about this book that you this published. book, yes. Uh, after retirement, I had nothing to do. So one day I decided to do something. First, to keep myself busy and not sit uh, either there without doing anything. Then the idea came to write on Somali history. This is how this book came about. To write a history on Somalia, you need sources, uh, information, data, and documents, which fortunately was possible here in London. All what you need was to go to the, the archives. They call the National Archives, TNA. I use it mainly the documents available at the National Archives in London. Mm. And I use it also archives and libraries in Italy. I use it also archives and documents at the United Nations Library in Geneva. And I interviewed also, I have interviewed also some Somalis who are uh, old enough who are very familiar with the Somali history, etc., of the 40s and 50s, etc. This is how this book came about, and it took me eight years to complete, and it came out in 2016 here in London. Mm. I, noticed, I noticed in your introduction, you mentioned how a lot of events took place in Somalia especially during the period of 1941 and 1969. And a lot of these events and incidents were not really recorded because people at that time did not really write mm. the incidents. Apart from one, I think, president, you had a diary. Um, is, would you say this is something that motivated you to, to put, um, write this book? Yes, uh, this book is generally based on mainly or partly the diaries of uh, President Aden Abdullah, yeah. who was the only politician mm who left a, a diary. In his diary, he noted all the events that were taking place in front of him and uh, the politics at the time. Uh, during the time, he was uh, uh, the speaker of the parliament and the period he was the head of the state. That was a formidable uh, primary source because 
is something that uh, uh, written by uh, someone who was in the politics. Uh, and, and that was so useful for me as a sources, you know. Yeah. Of course, not only the diary of Adnan Abdulli, but as I, as Jeff said, just said, uh, the documents in this archive is Italian or, Amer or, or British here. Yes. So that was, there's nothing I invent, invented here without citing the, 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 the uh, origin noticed, of the source. I've yeah. noticed this as well, it's very um, fully referenced and yes. it's very objective. Yes. I, I and I try to be as objective as I could. You hardly mention your opinion or your views. Absolutely, yes. Well, opinion, very limited uh, mm. opinion I expressed, etc. I left it to the reader to evaluate. Yes, and come, uh, to, look, come to their own conclusion. Yes. And now looking at the chapters of the book, because mm. um, there are some, a few chapters that I found interesting, especially for the sake of this channel. Yes. I mean, you've covered so much. There's court hearing with literally every political party at that time. Yes. When they met the commissions. And they met the commission, yes. Yeah. Mm. And then the way you broke down the chapters is from the, the timeline, the dates. Yes. So let's start with the first um, chapter that you spoke about. You started off with talking about, um, well, this is chapter two. Mm. You spoke about the Bevins plan of Greater Somalia. Something yeah. that's not really that spoken about. Yes. Do you like to tell us? Yes, the, the Bevin uh, plan. Bevin, first of all, was the name of uh, the foreign minister of Britain of the time. Ernest it, Bevin. Yes, Ernest Bob, uh, Bevin. And just for um, context wise, Ernest Bevin is the one that drew up the plan for Israel and Palestine. Yeah. Even other, I other, can't, other countries. Yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, you had the treaty. And then even in the Second World War, you, you drew a treaty as well for. Uh -huh. I don't remember which country. Uh -huh. but sorry, carry on. <laughs> so even for Somalia, he had this plan. Mm. But he, his plan, and it, he made this plan in 46, 1946. But this plan was uh, objected, not by the Russians only, but even his allies, yeah. Americans. And French, mm. and they considered this, uh, and, and the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians quickly reacted, saying that there is no way that we can accept a part of Ethiopia being detached from the main uh, mm. country and given to other. Yeah. They objected. The Americans even uh, so, it it, it, it died. Uh, the, the plan died immediately after mm. its uh, announcement. You know so. So like um, because Bevin's plan f and initially what Bevin's plan was was to because at that time Somalia to unite was yes. a bit of factions yes like, actually Ethiopia Ogadenia yeah. uh, NFD etc and, then, um, and British Somaliland and here uh, he replaced the, the British replaced the Italians you know in yeah. Mogadishu in the south and he came he came with this plan to unite the whole Somali regions as yes. under one yes under one. Uh, and but even called. that was not uh, very uh, clear. It was uh, 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 interesting. Is that the Lega did not like this because where they are, they were fearing that there would be a trick, uh, hidden uh, political program for the British, mm. and they were always uh, against uh, this uh, idea. But the idea, uh, 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 Bevan plan. Was, was not so strong and it was heavily criticized and uh, objected even by the, his allies. Mm. You know. So it, it didn't work. It didn't and then the Russians, I think it was the Russians who said, because I've done some research on this and other sources, they said mm. the reason why this Bevin came plan, this yeah. plan, Greater yeah. Somalia plan, was because. Yes. Greater the, Somalia. Greater yeah. Somalia, yeah. Mm. At that time, the Ethiopians were expanding at a fast rate. And they had even taken over lands that belonged to Somalis, yes. where the Somalis would go and that land to graze. And this caused, and this Britain at that time saw it as a threat. Yes. So, which is why they bought this. And yes. the Italians also bought this, um, they bought this idea and they agreed with it. Yes, and uh, it was a not very articulated thing, uh, the, the plan, and it collapsed immediately. And because mm. of this opposition from different parts, Ethiopia, and it's, uh, uh, Russians, uh, French, uh, and the Americans themselves yeah. were uh, close allies to the, to the British. So at that time it was heavily objected, as yes. you said, and yes. as you state in your book. But why is it that 
um, 30, 40 years later, mm-hmm. amongst the Somalis, they're less um, receptive to this plan. They call it Somali Wayne, and they still, even, even though it was something that bought by Bevin and yeah. was objected, yeah. is it because of the sense of unity or? Yes, uh, the SYL, which is, was the major political party in, in Somalia, uh, advocated always, and in their program, they made clearly that they needed a greater Somalia. The greater Somalia included also Djibouti, which the British were not responsible for. Uh, French, yeah. And then I don't think the Bevan plan itself uh, did mention to NFD. Uh, okay. Uh, all what they were talking about, Ogadenia, I think, and British Somaliland, I mm. think. So, yeah, it did divide the Somalis. Yes, yes. So, it was not a complete... Uh, and then later on, I noticed they called it Bevin Svorza plan. Who was Svorza? Svorza. Svorza yeah. was the Italian foreign minister. So yes, a very uh, Carlos Svorza. He was mm. a count. Uh, he was uh, from a noble family. Mm. Uh, but that came uh, later on. That came later when, on. Uh, when uh, the... the the Italian uh, former colonies were brought before the United Nations. So Even on its first hour, two... Two different yes, times? Yes, really? a different time, yes. Okay. No, I understand. In 46, Bevan alone, mm. but in 49, with his Forza. Yes. Carlos Forza. Now, um, after the Bevan plan, shortly after the Bevan plan, we had what happened was, you mentioned the, the incidents of 1948. You spoke about this in great detail. You said about the massacre of Italian civilians yes. and then the riots. Yes. And then I think this was when um, Hao Otako was murdered, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And so do you want to... Yes, <laughs> this incident of uh, 11 January. Yes. Was, they call Undice Gennaio. Uh, 11 January, 48. He knows, he remembers. Undice Gennaio, they call him. I think it's only remembered by the elders, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the four power commission Arabic Mogadishu to interview and ascertain what uh, the, the population uh, was thinking about their future. Yes, because they were heading towards independence. Yes, independence. And as you have seen in the, in the book, they met all kinds of organizations, even Arabs, even Italians. Political parties. Yes. Then there was a, a, a strong propaganda machine in Mogadishu financed by the Italians. So to impress and to show how the Somali group, which was in favor of uh, Italian Rizan, they incited these people and they gave, gave them uh, uh, vehicles, uh, money and everything and they made a procession, you know, in front of the hotel where the, the, the commission stayed, which is Croce del Sud in, in Mogadishu. And not only that, but they attacked even the, the seat or the headquarters of the Lega, which is in front of the statu- statute of uh, Hawataku. I don't know if you remember where it was, etc. You have never seen, I think. Then. The leg was, uh, the, the SYL was angered by this uh, event. First of all, uh, the, the, the so-called pro-Italian uh, parties, they organized themselves to show uh, how strong was the, the need of the Italian return to, to Somalia. And on top of that, they attacked even the, the, the headquarters of the leg. So this angered uh, the leg and the leg or the SYL reacted. But in which way, they started uh, attacking and killing Italians in their houses, including children and women, etc. And uh, the lucky thing was that that day was uh, Sunday, and most of them were in the, in the church. Mm. And everybody, every Italian who was there that day in the street or in his house was killed. And the, Ital- the, the Italians, accused the British of negligence, of uh, have not done enough to protect these uh, unarmed civilians uh, under their protection, etc. It is said that 54 Italians and Killed. 14 Somalis who were their friends were killed that day. 
mm. which is was 11 January 1948. And then, um, would, you, would you say this incident is what? How significant was this incident in the shape of Somalia? Yes, yes, that incident is, according to me, it helped the Italian uh, position. Mm. Because uh, the Italian media here, and I think some European uh, media reports, uh, felt, you know, that uh, the, the British did not do anything yeah. or enough to protect them. And for two hours, people were free to enter the Italian uh, dwellings or houses and every kind of killing was uh, committed and that has uh, shocked you know the feeling of uh, the Italian government and many other European I think in fact from that time the British who were seen as Offenders. friends to the SYL changed mind changed mind and uh, a sort of a rapprochement uh, happened with the Italian community and with the Italian government in Rome. So you can see two entities, the Italian and the British, yes. and they were both rivals at that time. Yes. And they were funding both sides exactly. and arming both sides to fight against each other and this is what caused... Yes. And then I yes. think... But later on they, they, they became uh, yeah. friends because of the, the propaganda, the, 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 the media, the etc. And mm. uh, Italians who became, uh, you know, the fascism which uh, ended and uh, Italian government uh, becoming part of uh, NATO and uh, all these things Soviet changes, course, yeah. you know, and because the politics cannot be, uh, it's a dynamic thing, you know, uh, yeah. circumstances changed. And then straight after that, it was the commission, the full commission that came to Somalia at that time. Yes. And they, they carried out here a, a, a court hearing for all the political parties, yes. starting with SYL. Yes. And then also Hammer Youth Club was there as well. How was this? Because you, um, you've recorded each one and... Yeah. Even, even uh, the Hammer Club, no? Hammer Youth Club. Yes, yeah. club, yeah. but uh, later on, they, uh, and I was telling this to Abdul Qadir Bolai, you remember? Abdul Qadir yeah. Bolai, yeah. 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 Hammer, who passed away recently, recently, four years ago, three years ago, yeah. very prominent politician. And mm. the, uh, the, the Hammer Club, instead of acting or standing on their own, they, uh, they joined the Lega in their anti-Italian stand, you know. Mm. And I was telling to my friend, this, uh, Herr Hammer, uh, I said, according to me, you did a, a mistake. You should not join the Lega and embrace uh, their, their anti-Italian uh, policies. Mm. You should consider yourself as a, a special group, a segment of Somali. Of Somalia living in Mogadishu, called Her uh, Benadir, etc., and deal with uh, the Italians or anyone who was coming as a uh, as a uh, the power helping Somalia to independence. You should make your case, your own case, without joining the uh, uh, SYL. Uh, but I don't know how. Well, I think what you affect it, but because yes. um, uh, um, Hammer Youth Club and SYL, yes, they're pretty much aligned politically, yes, yes. and there were a lot of Banad and uh, but later on, uh, you, you know, yeah. the Lega uh, did not recognize this alliance mm. and this uh, support, yes, this, it, it's, it went sideways, it was a yes, end, betray, yeah. yes, and this is what I wanted to, to avoid. I said, if you are uh, on your own carrying out your uh, own uh, political program. Maybe even uh, it would have been decided that the, the Rehammer, they are the people of this city and their representation in the parliament is this and that, etc. Mm. But they uh, amalgamated it they, 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 with the Lega and the Lega uh, absorbed everything and uh, the people coming from our area has uh, taken everything, etc. And the Rehammer were left there. Mm. But this was my idea. Which I, I shared it with uh, Abdul Ghadir Polai. Uh, but SYL initially, because of 13 members, most yes. of them were very yes. but For example, yes. Yeah. And, uh, another, uh, but, then, but because of that, the politics are different, maybe. Yes. And they all went sideways. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, all right, so moving forward. So after these commissions, when all these courts, what was the outcome when they questioned every political party? Yes. The, in the hearing, the commissions? Yes, yeah, so everybody. Uh, 
a part of the, the SYL, the others were in favor of the return of Italy. Yeah, or some, yeah there were some parties, they were all mm. like... They were, Hezbiya. Um, Hezbiya. They were called even like, they were pro-Italians. Yes, the pro-Italian groups are all here and they mm. asked for Italian return uh, for 30 years. And I explained it. isn't it? Yes, <laughs> under the umbrella of Conferenza yeah. party. And I explained here why uh, this uh, longer period of uh, trusteeship, no? Mm. I said they, they want more time to be prepared uh, and if mm. the economy could be uh, developed and etc. But and the Lega had, was in, in hurry, you know, and people nowadays, they say that was a, a wrong, a mistake mm. to ask for a shorter period, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, huh? but it is late. But these people, I say, they, they understood uh, early enough mm. that the time was uh, short, you know, uh, 10 years. So after the, 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 the court hearing, a few years passed by, and then the British... Decision was taken. Decision was taken. At the United Nations. Yes. yes. And then the British left yes. and the handover happened. The yes. Italians came back to yes, again, yes. Somalia. And this is what paved way to the colonial entity of Somalia and yes. the Shatter capital. Yes. And then you spoke about Operation Caesar. The, the military, the, the troops. Deployment yes. of Italian troops. Why was Yes, and that, that, that was the fault of the British. They said, if you are not bringing in enough forces equal to the number of forces we have now, the British says, and the British troops were mainly accepted the officers. Mm. They were from Kikuyu, from, uh, from Kenya, Kenya, huh? Kenya and the other part, uh, Kampala, uh, Uganda. We cannot guarantee the security. So this is why this number of 5,000 Italian troops came. And they were not happy, the Italians, because not uh, because of the number, but for the, the economic factor, because you need funds for military, etc. No, mm. uh, And they were in a bad situation those days. They could not They afford. just finished the Second World War. And yes. They this, were not funded enough. Yeah. So that was the, what the British advised and insisted that the troop level should not be less than what they have now. Mm. Now let's talk about... In, in fact, it, uh, one year later, etc., when the Italians saw that there's no security problem, most of the military were uh, repatriated. They went back. They went back to, to Italy, yes. Mm. Mm. So let's talk about, because you know, part of the various political parties within these, these like, um, this, the country at that time, there was also the Arab Community Party. Yes. Now, there was a time when, um, there's a chapter you wrote, a special mm. chapter, which is, um, it's called Law. There was a hearing, you know, for them. Uh, I was giving, uh, they had their own hearing as well. Yes. Yeah. And they were, they were more anti-Italian, they don't want Italians to come back, or Ethiopia. Mm. But at the same time, I don't remember properly. Yes. But their, their, their position was very different to everyone else. They just wanted ah, to be a left. It was or ambiguous. Or, 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 there was did no did they mention any country to come? No, no. no but with, the, with the Arabians now, because uh, the Arabs at that time, mm -hmm. their case was different. They were just talking about, they were talking about the discriminations they yes, faced. Yes. And they said before the Italians were here, we were traders here, we were doing business. And then things are changing now. We, we could not even trade properly. Uh, exactly. And so they were, they were, they were like, Ah. Providing their case. And then we, we have to uh, say clearly that the economic situation of the country changed a lot in the sense that it is deteriorated because of the war. Because the British did not know what to do. They did not do anything uh, meaningful to develop economics because they didn't know what to do with Somalia and what the UN will do. And there was a lot of corruption there, the law. Yes, yes, a lot of um, with the military yes. men just yeah. doing that. So this is the economic situation uh, went down. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, during the fascist time, there was a government, a state, a system uh, uh, working. But now that did not exist any longer and the situation was so... Mm. Uh, Okay, so after now this, this commission and then the decision was made, the Italians come back, you yes. know, Operation Caesars. Yes. So how was the country, the situation? The country, at that time? yes. At the beginning, up, uh, 
throughout the first four years of the arrival of the Italians, there was a tension between the, between the SYL and the Italian government. Because the SYL, being a majority and most uh, efficient political party in the country, was against the Italian return. This is something, a decision taken by the United Nations. Of course, some Somalis went to New York to ask for the Italian return. That is a, another thing. Mm. But the leg was the only valid and efficient and uh, where you have the elite of the country was because uh, amongst, amongst SYL, there were some who were very literate, wasn't it? Yes, and yes. They were educated. Of the local standard uh, of the time. And they were all young men as well. Yes, young men, yes. The clash was every day there. Mm. The situation changed and eased it. The tension eased it with the first municipal elections in 54. In 54, the SYL won the won the most of the cities municipalities the then they understood that uh, okay the italians were not that bad and they did not uh, favor uh, their supporters the pro italian parties etc from there the the, the, the started a new era of uh, understanding and talking etc followed by 50 56 political election again the majority of the cities went to the leg, the SYL. Then the cooperation, uh, I, I put uh, a chapter, from confrontation to collaboration. They started collaborating with the Italians. Yes, yeah, so with the Italians, and they became friends, etc. And there was no talk about pro-Italian or anti-Italian. No, that we became all pro-Italian. So And they started even waving the Italian flags in the um, political, like... Um, Where? Rallies. I've read in another book, not this book. Ah, not the book. Another ah. book. It said at the Hammer Youth Club, they were they were blaming the SYL, saying these were pro, pro Italians. <laughs> but this is a topic for another day. I think you read uh, uh, Mohammed Usman's book. No. Ah. This, yeah, you um, know Mohammed Usman, the ambassador, who passed away here five, six Ahmed years. Usman, no. Ah, you don't know. Here, right, right. You know. Hammer. Was an ambassador, yes. Uh, but I probably know him, but mm. I'm not. That yeah, 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 no, yes, yes, yes. So, so from 56 with the first general elections and the first formation of the Somali government, Abdullah Issa, the Abdullah first Issa. Uh, during office, still we are in uh, uh, under, under the yeah under the Italian still the trusteeship. Uh, uh, they were friends until the end. Oh, and uh, even the the independence date has been uh, anticipated of six months. In the of December 60, the trusteeship ended in July 60. Mm. Okay, so mm. this was uh, the, six, the late six, uh, early 60s. Yes. So, so the independence started, a new president was elected, and Italy and trusteeship is, uh, became uh, a fact of the past. In the it became history, and for mm. nine years, the civilian government was uh, running in the country and so um during the 60s yes. you also mentioned the exodus of the arabs yes. where they were banned from trading or buying or selling um i think it was the ministers prime minister who appointed this who came with this law how did this come about okay you have to correct first of all that it was not a a law coming from the government it was was a bill coming from a group of mps the government was against this law, uh, uh, forbidding, you know, and, uh, the Arabs, not only the Arabs, but all foreigners, of retail trades. They were talking about retail trades, you know. They say these retail trains, these small trades, should be given to the Somalis, but not uh, since the Arabs were the majority of those people, uh, of those uh, areas, yes, uh, traders, they were uh, hit uh, badly, you know. And uh, those days, I remember it was in '66, and the prime minister was Abdelazak, and the head of state was Adnan Abdullah. Still, they would lose power after one year, but 
the time of this uh, Arab uh, exodus. The country was run by Abdul Rizak and Adel Abdullah. So we have to correct, it's not a, a bill mm, which yeah. came from the government. The government was, uh, and because the government, ah, when the, le the law was passed by the government, the head of, of state rejected to promulgate. Mm. He said, examine this again, second time, because this creates as a problem in Arabia. Division. He mentioned, yes, we have many communities, Somali communities in Arabia, uh, Aden, uh, Yemen, uh, uh, what do you call Hatramud, and all this. He wrote as a mm. justification for rejecting this law. And the law was returned to the parliament for a second reading or for second examination. But in the meanwhile, the damage has been done. Because many of the, these Arabs, they left the country, even uh, selling their properties uh, the, under uh, value, you know. They went back in the new. Yeah. Did that affect the economy at that time when everyone started leaving the businesses? No, I, I think some Somalis, they <laughs> took advantage, etc. Uh, 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 the, the law was rejected and then the uh, situation went back to... Mm to normal and because in the second reading the law did not pass mm. because uh, certain uh, uh, number of deputies or majority was needed two thirds two two third majority something and it did not reach so the the law but why did they um draft this law in the first place ah uh, the but uh, all to to unsettle the government was a group of deputies within the ruling S uh, SYL group who were against the government, although they are from the same party. So to annoy the government, they unsettled, they brought these things. And it was not only the, the, this, the retail uh, trade, but later on they will bring other bills, they will introduce other bills asking the government to, to nationalize all the Italian properties, including the farm, farms, uh, Fiat, uh, the agency giving the, uh, supplying the electricity, and, and that was all steps aimed to unsettle, annoy the government. And later on they succeeded because after one year, the Abdel Zak government uh, fell, you know, one. Yeah, that's, that's after 69. Yes, uh, yes, and because there was a strong uh, opposition without the SYL mm. that he could not uh, sustain, yes. So you also, um, in your concluding chapters, you spoke about, on t one of the chapters you spoke, um, the title was Tribalism, the Silent Killer. Yes. Is this, a pro this was a problem back then and it's still... Yes, it, it, is, it was always like this. Uh, nowadays, they say it uh, worsened it because it became a system. Mm. Those days, people were not talking about tribalism publicly, but practically everything was done in, uh, on a tribal basis. For example, say if you had a head of state coming from some groups, Somali clans, the prime minister could not be someone from the same from the same uh, group of the president. You should be different. Check, uh, select another one. Mm. The head of the parliament, the speaker, should come from uh, another. There's no rule saying that two coming from the same area, geographical areas or clan, could not hold, could not be president and prime minister. There's no rule. But it became a part of the rule. Yeah, and uh, and it's still and, and, and written, today. And written. Mm, and rule. This is what is the big detrimental effect in the country, isn't it? In performance. <laughs> yes. When uh, someone is, when someone is um, judged based on his clan. Yes. Rather than his merits or qualification. No, nothing. And I made a comparison between uh, Somalia and uh, Lebanon. But in Lebanon, is in the is written in the constitution where the president. It's a Christian, not every Christian, but Maronite. The Prime Minister, Muslim, but not all Muslim, but Sunni. The head of the parliament, 
Druze or something like that, the other group, etc., etc. But that is in the Constitution. Mm. We in Somalia were applying the same thing, but not written in the Constitution. Mm. It, I, I made that. Uh, uh, you made that comparison, but even if, even though you apply the, the apply that system, yes. you think the system actually works, or is it justifiable? Or what's your opinion? Ah, I know you don't speak about your opinion much. In the book. Yes, uh, I knew when. Uh, Adan Abdullah first in 1960 appointed Abd Rashid. He said he did for a good reason for the interest of the country. During the office time, the Italian time, there was a government responsible for the domestic affairs, but not because the, the trusteeship was still there. The government of that time was led by Abdullah Issa, which comes from a uh, a Somali uh, clan, except, let us say, Hawiya. He clashed later on with the Mujurtini deputies. And there was a big problem during the independence, uh, the two years before the independence. Now, with the independence, Adan Abdullah was very careful about who he should select or appoint as a prime minister. He could not ask Abdullah Issa again to form a government because Abdullah Isa and he himself, Adan Abdullah, were coming from the, not from the, the same Hawiya group, but even from the same uh, constituency. This is why he appointed Abdul Rashid to calm down so the tension works. and it worked. It. But now sometimes they'll use it for a positive effect, but then sometimes they'll use tribal for a negative way. Yes. And as you can see today, a lot of politicians would use their tribe yes. to get yeah, yeah. their own personal gains. Yeah. Um, you also touched on homogeneity of Somali society. Yes. This, is a, this is a thing that's even discussed today in yes. digital media. There's this argument that's saying that Somalia is a hom homogeneous country. Mm -hmm. What's your that is a false. Yes, it's something that Lega has always uh, disregarded, has always uh, never said clearly this was a, the homogeneity of the Somali uh, society is based on a false and fake perception. They were ignoring all the other um, minorities existing in the country which their culture or maybe with their language, or maybe with their uh, tradition, etc. And by ignoring the existence of these uh, realities, they created uh, people to be marginalized. Okay, if they are homogeneous as the, uh, the SYL uh, claims, why they were not uh, allowing this? other minorities to be in the government, to be represented, etc. They were marginalized. And then I said that was, was false, the idea of Somali homogeneity. Uh, mm. Yes, even the people of uh, Alta Juba or the Rahawin, they don't yeah. consider to be of the same origin and of the same interest with the people from the northern uh, uh, region of the country. This is language wise, culture. Yes, language wise, culture, and everything. So, the existence, especially of uh, people of Bantu origin in uh, Lower Juba, that was, uh, that was, those people were neglected and not given enough uh, encouragement to, to be. No uh, representation. Yes. And it's still now, it's like that. Would you say also the problem this lies with Italy as well? For them to name the country as Somalia, naming the naming whole country after an ethnic group, even though there are other ethnic groups living in that. This was, would you say this is also a factor that led to this? Yes, uh, the Italians, the only thing they knew that was the, uh, the division of the Somalia on a clan mm. basis. They were dealing with uh, uh, traditional leaders uh, representing the mm. clans, etc., to keep. Uh, the peace and the security there, etc. So they didn't want to change. Now, moving forward, I mean, you did cover, uh, there's so much that we can talk about from this book, but the length and the time that we have. Yes. 
this is this is a side question, not enough to do with the book. Yes. Currently now in Somalia we have the 4.5 system, mm. which is another tribal discriminatory mm. system as well. Yes. We both know this. And you are someone that studied minister, you studied law, human rights. You've done ministry of ministry of justice. What, in your opinions, are the problems of 4.5, and how effective is it? The problem of the 4.5 criteria or system of uh, has been debated, you know, uh, very well in, in the Somali narrative, official or not official. In one way, now everybody was given representation in the parliament or in the government. One time, I, I'm looking now from the positive aspect as I see this criteria. One time, women or the people considered to be uh, low caste, how, how do you say, low, uh, low, caste, low caste, and the people in the uh, lower Juba had no representation in the parliament or in the government or in the Nowadays they have, because of the system. One time I didn't have, and I doubt in the future, if we reach one day the system of one person, one vote, how women and these people, etc., would be represented, etc., because how can uh, uh, one of loc locals establish a party? But who, who would, uh, because of their number, I mean, well, based on, I know, because they're guaranteed. Mm -hmm. This is the most the, as I see it. But would you, would you see, would you ever see the low caste or, or Bantu or something like that? Yes. Would you ever see them as a president, even though they were in Somalia? No, no, in Somalia, no, I don't think, because of the, because of the, of the mentality, because of the history, because of the, the uh, mindset, because of the culture. Mm. I would like to see, but I don't see uh, chances uh, uh, so these people becoming a, a head of a political party, which uh, one day will win the elections. And that is, is because the way the system is built, they will never be able to have the opportunity to come no, to them. I don't think. And they will always be repressed yes. as a point five. And that is a negative. Yes, yes. That, that will. Uh, mm. This stigma will uh, follow us, uh, and it'll always be a downfall yes. for the nation. And mm. one, the one man, one vote. My opinion, I think, will still be the same where people will be voting based on tribes. Exactly. And then the minority will still have not will still not have a chance because yes. sometimes I'm in a friendly way. I say, but now you have representations with that. This system, 445 system, you have representation. Women do have. Uh, the low caste do have. The people from uh, the Bantu origin have. And then uh, if the, we surpass this uh, system. But then even that representation itself is very minimal. Is that just well, a figure? Uh, yeah, that is true, very minimal. But uh, one time there was no representation. With the system of one, by, one vote, one man. They didn't have in the past, well, and I doubt if they will have in the future. But why? Because as you, as you mentioned, tribalism is a silent killer. Will this? How can this? Or will this ever ever change? Where someone can actually vote for someone based on his um, merit or performance? Maybe the up upcoming youth will yeah. see the change and see. The I, I, I don't know how much they will change, etc. But uh, in the immediate future, I, I don't see it. All is. Uh, uh, current interest. You yes. vote, Abdurrahman, you vote for the person, not for his ideology. There is no uh, political party in Somalia with ideology. Islamic, uh, uh, socialist, uh, communist, uh, liberal, uh, we don't have these things. We have the party and who is the, the, the leader of the party or the candidate. The candidate is more important than the, uh, the ideology. Mm. The ideology, ideology never worked in Somalia. The only things that they talk, if you see the um, political parties in Somalia in the past, was the unification of Somalia, but that is a, a shallow thing. Unification. No economic program, no education, nothing. So despite everyone still screaming or waving Somali way in Somali Nimo, yes, at the end of, greater Somalia. end of the day, it just falls down, falls back to the tribe. Yes. 
and that is just unfortunate. Unfortunate, and, and, and nowadays we are even sliding towards this uh, anarchy, you know, with, with this system. And I think they, now they understand each other and they respect. They know what is wrong, which is not right, the rule, etc. But they say as long as we have peace and things go on. And it's not looking good for Bantu <laughs> yes. and other people. <laughs> yes. I'm not uh, optimistic about uh, immediate. Uh, every time they talk about uh, discrimination and this and that uh, in this country or in Europe uh, or in America or in Canada, I ask them to look inside your, uh, your country, your system. Uh, well, uh, How you treat other people? Yes. <laughs> Um, um, and I don't know if you're on social media, but digital media, mm. the Somali people are very, very active, very patriotic. Yes. It could be a good Absolutely, thing. Absolutely, yes. But, and they speak about a lot of things about their history, whether it's true or not, that's something else. But how come a lot of the cases in this book is not it's hardly talk spoken about? Why is this? That yes, I. Not a lot avoided. of Somali youth know about these cases. Yes. <laughs> I avoided uh, talking about uh, uh, our history and uh, the goodness and etc. because uh, I know that uh, the Somalis they like to uh, over pridely talk about their history etc. But I don't think I, I, I'm the w one of those who thinks that the independence was given in a golden plate, you know, because of the. Uh, the war, because uh, Italy uh, lost the war, uh, the United Nations were established and uh, an opportunity came to help us. Mm. The four, four power commission came to ask us who you want, which state you want to help you to, mm. we, we can give the trusteeship to help you for independence. Mm. We are not like a Kenya where people were killed, exiled, etc. We are not like Zimbabwe, or, where Libya. Are, or Libya, or even though there were killings in Somalia, yeah. there were <laughs> war with uh, British invasions and the yeah. Italians. So <laughs> it's been a pleasure, first of all. Is, do you have any plans to make a future book? Or I'm yes, I'm working on a book on uh, Adan Abdullah, the first president, is uh, biography. I've been working on this uh, over the last of four years, five years. Yes, yes. Oh. and now we, we are the. Uh, last well, stage, you know, one for publication. Is there a date when it's going to be published? Or? Uh, no, I, you will be the first to <laughs> know when we decided the, the editing the, well, the language, yes. I wish you the best in your book. Yes. Uh, Mohammed Chunji, it's been an honor to have <laughs> you on my show. Thank you so much. Abdul for Rahman, time. Is, uh, the, the pledge is mine. So and you're also welcome uh, back. And thank you everyone for viewing in, watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you took something out of this show. And I hope you also like, subscribe, comment, share, and take care. Thank you very much. It's good. Can you liberate me from this? Yeah. Liberate. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be independent.